today's tutorial, we're going to learn how we can add UI controls at runtime using Zojo 2021 Release 3 and later. Using this new addition to the Zojo framework will greatly simplify this task. So all we need to do is call the add control method in order to add any of the available UI controls to our app's windows or container controls. This is something we can see more clearly through this example project. As you can see, every time the user clicks on the add control button, a new push button is added on the fly to the user interface. So we haven't needed to add a base push button to the window layout in the Zojo IDE in order to make new copies or instances from it. But these in instances are actually created directly from the code. And we could even add any of the other available UI controls besides just buttons. So how do we do this? As you can see here, we've added a container control to our project named base container and added an event definition to it named control pressed. That event will be the one fired by our container control every time the user clicks on any of the buttons added on the fly to the container. But the central method here is the one named add new control. This one contains the code responsible for adding new push buttons to the container using the add control method. If we briefly review the code, we can see how it calculates the position where the new push button instance will appear in the buttons matrix. And then we will simply create a new instance of the desktop push button class. We'll set its basic properties afterwards, like the new button name, uh, its caption, and of course the top and left properties. Because these are controls created on the fly, we're going to need a way to detect and respond every time the user clicks on one of these buttons. This is something that's done using the add handler function, where it receives the uh, event parameters that we want to catch from the button, in this case the pressed event, and then the address of the method that will be called instead of the button event itself. Here we're using the address of the control action callback method. If we sneak a peek at the declaration and code of that method, we can see how it receives the object itself as a parameter, so we can access its properties or even call to its methods if we need to. In addition, the code of this method will simply raise the defined control pressed event passing along the received object. And that's all we need to do. Now from the UI perspective, we only need to add an instance of our base container control to the window one window and implement the control pressed event. As you can see, the code in our example project will simply assign the name of the received control to the label control press name previously added to the window, displaying the name of the desktop button that has been clicked by the user. Of course, you can download this example project from the link in the description of this video in order to take a deeper look into the commented code, and you can better understand how everything works. But apart from how the controls are arranged in the matrix on the window, the main point here is how easy it is now to add new controls on the fly to your UI instances without the need of using control sets.